Hey, uh, welcome to more of the Sam and Max Devil's Playhouse commentary. This is for episode four. I'm Chuck Jordan, the season designer. Uh, Mike Stemley, uh, co-designer on this episode and writer. Uh, Joe Penny, I helped out with the design of this episode. Andrew Lingley is content programmer for this episode. Dennis Lart, lead cinematic artist and also destroying my life by being director at the same time. Sucker. <laughs> and Stinky is throwing huge plates. Oh my god. Plate. They're like cake plates. <laughs> yeah. Which fits. You better tell them that. Yep. Uh, Maya's cutscene here. Very Which, cool. Uh, turned yes. out really cool. Makes me scared. Yes. I am oh. scared of three quarter naked Sam's coming to me, <laughs> chasing me in their underwear. I'm not sure that's physically underwear. possible. But. What horrible truths. Man, I almost, for the, when this episode was released, I was thinking about, uh, we were wearing suits, and I was thinking about getting some gold in my fabric <laughs> to put on the outside. Yes. And then realized that would be humiliating. Oh, Dennis, this narrator head was your idea, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a sequel. Oh, is it? Yeah. No, I think I... I, don't know. Yeah, right. I remember it was described to me, and I had I thought it was a crappy idea. Or I just couldn't envision it, and then when I saw it, I was like, oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm stupid. I think it was I was told we couldn't have any, like, we couldn't keep doing body animation with them. Yeah. So it was just like, floating heads. Bob Keeshan. I always wanted to get a Captain Kangaroo reference out. <laughs> that t I could attach to that title, and I think it made a little bit more sense early on. Because I think like the very first draft of this story, you were going to be going um, back around the alley. The be yeah, there was the alley behind Stinky's, and that's how you get into the kitchen. Uh, instead, it was just an excuse for me to get a few Roger Ebert jokes in at the end of the episode. <laughs> I got to say that the staging of this opening cutscene is amazing. Yeah, it's yeah, like it's very like sort of I like the one shot. It's like opening of Third Man or Boogie Nights or something. That's what yeah. actually exactly was when we started out. I uh, <clears throat> I basically was just telling Maya, so I was like, okay, this cutscene has to sell the entire game, and he'd never and seen a heck uh, of a lot of talking. So yeah, yeah. And I basically was just like, oh man, it's this one shot thing like Boogie Nights, and he'd never seen Boogie Nights. So that night we went home. And uh, he came over to my house and yeah, like, watched it. I like to picture you and him <laughs> alone yeah, yeah. in your apartment <laughs> watching Boogie Nights together. together. <laughs> That's, That's an amazing yeah. visual. Yeah. Yeah. And this is one we definitely wondered early on was Grandpa Stinky. Yeah. yeah. Oh, going right, medieval. So I got the iron. Repeat, half naked, quickly dogged creatures are running And in this episode, we ran the Sam is fat jokes right <laughs> under the ground. <laughs> yep. See, I, don't, I don't think he's that fat. I don't no, know. that was that that that's the bad. point. Yeah. <laughs> I could never tell. Oh, well, he's off big fella. I'm pretty upset about the Zafted Crack too, but that's no reason to go in. Zafted Crack. That's a great <laughs> name for a band. <laughs> yeah, we. I know uh, early on we worked really hard on this, trying to get the whole, like, zombies idea, you know, clones, whatever, breaking in <clears throat> to the... Uh, the diner and make it feel all claustrophobic. I think we which came out well. Yeah. I think we explored trying to get the jukebox to be playing inappropriate music, a la Shaun of the Dead. We just never really make it work, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. The rest of the entire galaxy. <laughs> That's what you call some deathless writing, there. <laughs> Although I remember in the uh, the playtest, <clears throat> it was unanimous that everyone was like, "Oh man, the writer of this episode is so much better than the writer of the previous episode." And you were like, "I outwrote myself." Yeah. <laughs> and then you hit them I, in the face. Uh, it awkward. took me an entire episode to figure out how to write Sam and Max again. <laughs> and I got the Overpower. easy. I got the easy psychic power. None of this rhinoplasty yeah. stuff. Mind reading. <laughs> You know, I was very close to putting in an Easter egg of uh, a peanut butter jelly time Easter egg. Yeah. And you ate I'm glad I didn't. Thank you for not doing that. <laughs> I wasn't going to tell There are you. already enough Easter eggs in this episode that I had no idea were going in. <laughs> That's what we call value. I thought it was just one. No. <laughs> uh, this, this whole moment between this. Sam and Clone Sam, was that scripted or was no, that? No, that was that was something that suddenly showed up one day and I had to like beat it back with a stick to keep it from lasting for like 20 minutes. Uh, it was extremely but, creepy and it's very long form though. Yeah. 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 Maybe a little too I creepy. think Mice did a good job though. What this girl stuck yeah. you doing down here? Yeah. Oh God. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, we knew we knew it would work once we we did it sort of as a. I think remember we were <clears throat> Mice and I were just like screwing around with ideas, and I was like, oh man, maybe there's another one there, and we we put it in, and then he sort of did this whole bit right here, and <laughs> everyone that saw it just cracked up. Yeah. So we figured like, okay, well, let's try to keep something reminiscent of this in, but not have it be ten minutes. The fact that there's no audio yeah. is good. <laughs> Also, like previous episode of Jacketless Sam, a uh, hatless Sam was uh, yep. yeah. did require work. I don't know. Did we ever fix his idol to where he would adjust his hat even though he wasn't wearing his hat? Anymore? Yeah, yeah, we took that out. That's too bad. Because I actually thought that was funny. Because it's like <laughs> yeah. if you stop wearing glasses, you you find yourself still adjusting your glasses that you aren't wearing anymore. <laughs> That's true. Toys, toys, toys. That's true. Yeah, that was a Max, story. who apparently is floating. In the- <laughs> Music in this scene oh, is so uh, wonderful. Should we talk about who did the uh, environment? It's a like concept art by. Oh, we got to talk about this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Andrew. Uh, God. All right. Um, so yeah, we'd done the Team Fortress Two promotion with Valve and uh, sort of ran the idea by it's like, hey, maybe we can put something of yours in our game, and then uh, we sort of ran with it and put the dispenser in this game, and then Nick Herman did a funny joke of bringing back the Benang to the Team Fortress Two dispenser and. It was pretty cool. A lot of us are big Team Fortress 2 fans. I'm yeah, not sure a, if anybody else cared on the team. There was a Benang reference in 301, but uh, it got cut to everyone's chagrin. Do you remember that? <laughs> well, I think it was the only people that liked it was QA. I remember, like, we never liked it. I remember from day one, you were just like, it's dumb. We should cut it. <laughs> yeah. I do want to call it. Who did the environment for that model? Do anybody know? Which one? The this one? Chamber? Oh, uh, Brian. Brian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brian. Totally yeah. awesome. Sweet. Sweet. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And a reveal we've been setting up for for a while. We knew early on we were this. The animation it's alien on head. Yes. Norrington is really good. Nice and impressed. Most humans are driven incurably insane by the mere glimpse of my unspeakable I liked all the speculation on who Dr. Norrington was. in our convention swag. So you're the mysterious Dr. Norrington? A lot of people and, uh, figured out he was young Sigoth, but Among not too many them, people figured Lord out. Sigoth, no one figured out he was stuck inside paperweight. Yeah. Oh, this is a slightly different right. version of the paperweight model shocking. with a giant hole punched in the middle of him. Yeah, yeah. Squid head sticking out. I just remember all the, the eyes at the top of his head or the little right. white things with dots. Like all the back and forth of like, those have to move. No, they I was very surprised that we actually got the visual of them ghostwriting the DeSoto. We just took the uh, cutaway Jake built for 303. And, uh, wow, that must have gotten in very last minute because I've never seen that. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I love this oh, scene. Yeah. Yeah. His, um, his impression of Uncle Morty. Yes? This was Casey uh, <coughs> Haggis. I pronounced his last name wrong. Sort of his first <coughs> really big scene that we just kind of threw him in. And, uh, yeah, I think it turned out really well. Yes. This is also the point at which we gave up all pretense of uh, Mama Bosco's lab not being on. Uh, <laughs> this music bit here seems yeah, eyes wide shut inspired. Well, there was that. It, yes. it was totally. Yeah. Thanks for the rescue, boys. Mama Bosco, what happened to you? I don't know. I was looking into all these random. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. All of a sudden, my Mike, you should talk about the uh, the exit of uh, Harry Mullen here. Oh, and what is the script? What did the script say when he leaves? Never to be seen again. Yeah, <laughs> we had grown sick of hearing all these. Yeah, I'd best alert my superior. <clears throat> Episode two was just tons of moles. Yeah, <laughs> of course you are, sir. <laughs> that Super Bowl continues to be enigmatic, and we won't ever explain him. He's like our G man. Is he a G-Man? Is he a man? <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Harry. That is great. Yeah. I don't know who did that. But that's that was awesome. Casey. That's Casey. That's sweet. Yes. Oh, so good. Sorry, this is a... And a bunch of gangers. Torsten did this uh, really awesome thing, <clears throat> which is probably the best in-tool animation. Was this also not scripted? <laughs> this was mostly scripted. Oh, I keep trying to take away credit from you. Yeah, this is this is pretty much what we knew. It was awfully convenient. I just wanted hat clone uh, hat clone driving the well, that, the that, car and yeah. then this whole bit. Yeah, that moment. Sam. And I just love the music. 
because yeah. we, we didn't have any budget for it, and I was trying to, like, get this moment in somehow um, and making Hat Clone awesome and being all, <laughs> like, basically taking over Sam's personality. Oh, crap. <laughs> Yeah, and speaking of scenes that uh, <laughs> were not in the game. I washed my hands of this. Yeah. I just, oh, yeah. yeah. This was one of those I was like, I always thought from day one, I was like, I just want to know, why doesn't Sam ever try to use the golden shorts? And Mike was like, we can't have it in a puzzle. We can't have it affect the outcome of the game. So it, it became a, a little Easter egg. Oh, your other criteria was it had to be done at the very last minute when everything else was done. Yes. So Myas and I came in Sunday night before we shipped, and we were here till 6 a.m., creating this whole just ridiculous what if Sam wore the uh, golden shorts to try and fit in or to try and do some sort of disguise. He looks so demeaned. <laughs> yeah. And then he ends up no. getting laughed at by, him, <laughs> by lots of hymns for being fat, which is sad. <laughs> uh, torture. This is a bizarre cutscene. Yes. <laughs> I've never yeah, seen this before. Oh, you haven't? Okay. No, I have because I think it came in after I'd finished yeah, my work, yeah. so I never saw it again. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all in his head. Uh, that was uh, how we got around the whole... What a twist. <laughs> and then he just walks off. This environment, I think... Uh, we talked for a while about cutting it or something, because no. it was like, oh, we don't have time to build a docks environment. Yeah. And then, uh, are, it was built S. super on the cheap, but it ended up being... That like was one of the one of the coolest <laughs> environments yeah. in a way. Yeah, and then we, here we finally reveal Mr. S to almost no one's surprise at this point. Yeah, it's one thing to read about the scene on the page and then to see it acted out loud is uh, insanely disturbing. Yeah. And I remember Jeff doing the animation. Yeah, it was gross. With sound sticky kissing. <clears throat> and I just remember everyone walking by his yeah. desk all day and just yeah. keeping, like, people would just be like, oh, and then a crowd would form. And everyone yeah, that's wrong, curious, that's and, wrong. Yeah. It's Drooby and, and then they would run for the bathroom. <laughs> and then Maya's adding that little bit where he just drops her. Yeah. The same question. That's great. I was going to ask about biological compatibility issues. All right, fine. Yeah, There's Stinky no kisses like a dog and a cockroach in this episode. In our forbidden love. Yeah, the forbidden love thing. <laughs> is he wearing the... I didn't notice this till today, but his hat is different. It's a Crates hat. It's best just, just Crates. crates. <laughs> yeah, the worst. No, I think that's the best. Where those come from? Stinky and Sour are kind of oblivious. Yes, Master. His blanked eyes was somehow difficult. It's one of those things that should not yeah. have been difficult, but ended up being a headache for me. I don't know why. It's kind of a disturbing crotch shot of Sal there. There's something for the ladies. <laughs> hey, look, purple tentacles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she straight up hates. <clears throat> Can I say I think I'm proud in a weird way that we may have had the first uh, Avatar joke in a video game? Yes. Awesome. Where he references the... Uh, can't get idiom. What can't is it? Get a, can't get oh, can't get him. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not proud. <laughs> I'm proud. I think <laughs> I won't be proud in about a month. But yeah, right now I'm very proud. Who said that? Hello, folks. Here's the bigger. Uh, oh, there we go. What was that? Unless I miss my guess. I wonder how many people actually guessed. Oh, the number of people. Little dark dimensional puppet. I knew it was evil. Thankfully, like all evil dummies, Charlie's pretty much helpless without a host body. Am I sick? Like the Groucho of Mark's eyebrows. Kill it with fire, Max. Oh, this is awesome. So we're basically trying to work in Hat Clone everywhere. <laughs> and that, that animation was awesome that Jessica did. We basically were acting it out in front of her desk for a while. I'm very proud that a lot of people online got the yank the core. A lot of people, yeah. a lot of people didn't, which is strange. Like they, I forget what they thought it was a reference to, but then, yeah, people say like, nope. Edward. Yeah. Um, yeah, by the way, it's, uh, it's uh, Bella Lugosi <laughs> and Glenda Edward's Glenda. Yeah, for those of you playing it, <coughs> I'm very you. The fight we had to get dozens of dancing Sam's yeah, it was jumping a, into a torch that was epic. 
uh, as, it, as it turns out, there's only really about eight of them on the screen at a given time, and they're you wouldn't know it. Yeah, they're it's all they're lots all of sharing the same animations. These are fake images. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think I originally that. went around pitching this idea of the Busby Berkeley dance sequence with Sam Clones, but then I suspect that you had this in your head already anyway. You were just sort of being like, yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we, wanted, we knew we wanted something quasi uh, million. Yeah. Roger L. Jackson, by the way. I uh, cannot say enough about that guy's voice. I do a zipping from the weird high pitch Charlie to the creepy low pitch Charlie. I didn't even know it was him. Yeah, I mean... Oh, so this is like... I love this bit coming out. Yeah, so this is a pretty uh, landmark moment here, which is like when you took control of Max before, it was always yeah. as a camera, mm -hmm. and now you're actually moving as Max. Max, with no inventory. We carefully planned that. <laughs> This is a part. funny added bit. <laughs> this was not in the original. Yeah. I remember when the, it was Maya who put that in. Well, I, we were trying to figure out something to do, and I just said, like, I was like, we have no ideas. Just make him run into a wall. <laughs> and I was joking, and then he did it, and then 10 minutes later came and grabbed me, and I was like, oh, crap, that's actually really funny. And everybody was like, it makes no sense at all, but keep it in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember the day of... Uh, Mike and I trying to figure out dance moves. Yeah. For the, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. We knew we wanted the Chuck Berry move yeah. with the duck block, and we wanted the uh, Pete Townsend. Uh, we ended up spending a lot of time refining the gameplay mechanics in this area, too. Yeah. yeah. Troy the robot? Yeah. Mike's childhood? Yes. Yeah. I am the atomic powered robot. Please robot. give my best wishes to everybody. <laughs> that robot is sitting on your desk. Yes. Jenny, get back into the toy box where you belong, Charlie. You'll never be Junior's favorite. Looks like the crowds had just about enough of your guff pops. What do you say, everyone? At what point in the the writing of the season was it decided that Charlie Hotep was going to be? Charlie, the, the villain. Charlie Hotep? That was pretty early, actually. We knew we wanted an evil ventriloquist dummy. Um, like, even a year before we started, we wanted an evil ventriloquist dummy. There was one episode where there was, like, the whole episode was them waiting for him to turn evil. Yeah. Because they knew that he was, because all ventriloquist dummies are. <laughs> yeah. I remember some early discussions. I thought the part of the idea for this episode was that the dimension, the void between the dark dimension and the current dimension were going to be sort of merging and you were going to be sort of doing gameplay in between both. Yeah. And uh, it was some cool stuff, but it was kind of ambitious. Yeah, it was a little ambitious. As it is, we just go with the walls starting to tumble approach. Yeah. yeah. It works. Yeah. The thing that really slightly annoyed... Uh, my wife about this episode that I was writing was it turned out to be a climactic fight between Charlie and Max, the names of our twin, uh, newborn uh, twin children. Interesting. <laughs> yes. So there's some subconscious uh, yeah. something going on there. We're setting our, so we know what our Halloween costumes are this year anyway. Yeah. I didn't <laughs> see, I'll call Child Protective Services and this is over. I haven't seen online whether anybody got that Charlie Hotep is a reference to uh, Nyarlath Hotep. From nope. the Cthulhu no, I, didn't know, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, the, so Jake definitely hooked up all the uh, the Max Uber power. It was actually yeah. Michael Peretta did a really quick effect for, uh, first with just the time that was allotted, and end up a bug happened that made it look like that, and then Jake basically <laughs> said, "I can do that." <laughs> yeah, and this is all choreographed by Eric yep. Parsons, who yeah. did a really, really good yeah. job. Yeah, I think he had to. His whole job was this whole sequence. <laughs> <laughs> I remember he looked sad when he got the assignment. Yes. Yeah. And it just, yeah. <laughs> I remember the thing The thing I liked most about this, um, which was it seems like the end of the series. Yeah. And, uh, I we get rid of the, the toy box. Yeah, and people in the playtest are like, I have no idea where you're going to go after this. And it's like, good. Yeah. I love the look of the Statue of Liberty here, too. Yeah. Ryan did some awesome yeah. concept art for this. Oh. Revenge. <laughs> I just wanted to punch him though. Yeah. Job, Max. Max? Just a minute, In retrospect, yeah, uh, even with, with Jake uh, talking in 305, we'd kind of wish uh, that we'd just left the hat away and then yeah. he got it back at the very end. <laughs> <laughs> it 
It's a season-wide arc. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, As seen in 303. And 302. doing a thing here. <laughs> that icky demon seed must have broken my fall. A demon seed was walk. really icky. You, I think I swallowed <laughs> some of that dark dimensional demon yolk. <laughs> Did it taste like chicken? No, no, no. It was more like uh, the succulent torments of the dead. I love the flaming <laughs> yeah. head effects. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was Mike something. Yeah. 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 And something we always wanted. You know, we're paying off the notion that Max's head would eventually burst into flames because of his psychic powers. I think Eric put in the first. Like it was supposed to be just be one blast right of his head, and then I think Eric did in a first one. I don't remember. Yeah. Crazy. And that always creeps me out every time. <laughs> That's the scariest part of the whole series. <laughs> and then. You guys did something just horribly evil here. <laughs> well, that was what, my one thing with the episode is like all the puzzles, the whole script, oh. everything I loved. And the one thing I just wanted to see more of was like the clones having like little Sam tendencies. So we made like Bunny Clone. Yeah. Which like oh, I gotta this, add that Bunny thing. is from Wallace and Gromit. And yeah. Three. It was it was how to do it with no resources. So the Bunny Clone. The fate of the Bunny Clone is just not nice. <laughs> oh, he's in a better place now. <laughs> Australia. Congratulations, my friend. Oh, man. Thanks to your valiant efforts, Sam and Max have eliminated the scourge. Did we? I guess we didn't really get a good look at the monster. I think we were kind of trying to save that as much as we could for the the next episode. Uh, we can. He's kind of shrouded in a little bit of darkness. But. Max, reality, and perhaps your very sanity. Yeah, it was a good setup, though, just seeing him walk into the city at the end. In the concluding chapter of The Devil's Playhouse. All right. Beautiful. And that's for uh, episode four, so come back for episode five. <laughs>